Today we're going to be going over how to create your own custom unique build ideas in Minecraft. Now one of the most common questions I get asked is how do I come up with so many unique ideas or when building my towns and cities? And the truth is it's a lot easier than you actually realize. It just takes a little bit of planning and a little bit of thinking outside the box. So today I'm going to share with you a bunch of tips that will help you get started and come up with your own ideas to improve your villages and cities. Like all builds, we're going to start from the ground up and we're going to start with the what not to do. Don't ever plan a large scale build from a large massive box. It does never work. It never plans out the way you want it to. Now, a lot of people will start with a huge box and build a big square, put on a roof to it and you get stuck because at that point it's very hard to detail because you've got such a large area that is just one big shape and your roof point is just going to be one big huge point in the center and there's just not much you can do with it. You can chip away at it and build it bit by bit and remove pieces, add pieces, but it's very hard to structure something that is built on such a large scale like this. What you want to do is consider something a bit more like this. Now, as you can see, we're still covering the same amount of area, but that large blue square has now become a bit more of a nicer shape. This allows us to have smaller roof points and having smaller roof points is going to be beneficial to the style because it will allow us to create more detailed roof points that are going to look more in proportion with the build rather than something that is going to look out of place. Another thing to take note here is that I've added these yellow areas onto every surface of the wall. Now, the reason I've got this is because if this was a standalone build somewhere, you would want it to look good no matter how you're looking at it or what side you're looking at it from. So having details on every visible wall is going to allow it to stand out and to still look nice no matter what. If you have a large section at the back of the build that is going to be flat and playing with nothing on it, it's going to look really sort of rubbish from the back of the build. So you want to make sure that you're still adding details, even if it's places that you're not going to be looking at very often. Now, with that being said, we also want to take into account that the yellow areas here are all going to be different sizes. We don't want everything to all be the same size or the same shape. And we also don't want to make these sections that are on the build the same height either. If we're using one area for a balcony at, say, the halfway point of a building, bring another section up higher towards the roof. Maybe another side, you could create one like little overhang, maybe a little shelter and make that roof a bit lower than the others. And maybe you could make the roofs at different angles, you know, create different angles and different heights, different variants, so that each side of the build doesn't just look repetitive, it looks different no matter how you're looking at it. Before you start building, you want to think about your odds and evens. Now, as you can see in front of us, we have an example of an odd numbered wall, which will always lead to a single block for a center point of the roofs. As you can see, we've got that upside down stair in the center. And no matter how wide or how narrow you build your walls, if they're odd numbers, you will always have a single point to work from. And this is typically how I like to work for my roofs. I always like to have that single point because it makes it much more easier to detail and line up additional roofs. On the other hand, even numbers do create a nice looking roof point. As you can see, the only problem for me is that we always end up with two stairs at the top point of the roof, which does make it a little bit awkward sometimes to sort of combine one roof into the next. So personally, my preference is always working with odd numbers, but there are occasions when I do use the even numbers too. So just keep this in mind before you start building. Okay, here we got a very basic layout for a building. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and built up the main structure part of the building. So we've got some pillars at the side, a separator through the center, and then we've changed the color at the top to strip birch, and we've got stone down the bottom, just to create a little bit of a varying color in the build, as having varying colors will definitely make a difference. Now, with that being said, my first thought is usually about how can I make each side of the build look different from the others. Now at the front here, you can see we've got an area for a little bit of a porch. At the side here, we've got another area. We have another area at the back here and one over at the side here. Each of them have a bit of a different layout and I have a bit of a different plan for each one. Let's start at the very front here with just a kind of brief example, first of all. So let's say we wanted to create an entrance way. We can bring our pillars up just like this. We'll bring another pillar up about here join this up like so 
and then we can make a little bit of a roof to join this all together. Now you can see we've added in a basic little entrance here. So now what we want to do is think about varying up some of the heights. So on this side here, we're going to create a little bit of a sort of additional section to the building. So we're going to bring it up and we're going to make it a couple of blocks lower than our actual build height. So we'll bring it up to roughly around there. Now, example here, I would simply fill in all of the walls with something like my stripped birch. And then we'd fill that all the way to the top. And then again, at the top here, we'd have another roof. And for the example here, I am sticking with the stairs. We will get onto some different pounds roofs a little bit later on. But for now, this is just all for an example of my sort of first thoughts for building. Now, it's important to remember here that you don't want each side to have sort of roof heights all at the same height because it's going to make the build look very boring and you're not really going to create much shape because everything is all going to be connecting to the same point. So now, as you can see, this gives us a higher roof area to this one here. OK, so we've got a secondary roof and we've got one here. One thing I think that really makes a build more than anything is adding plenty of different roofs to it, having plenty of sort of detail and areas that stick out and points where you can add these roofs really adds detail to a build. So try to think about this when you're planning your layout. Think about how many areas you can sort of make and how many areas you can add roofs to. Now, across the top here, of course, this would be our standard roof line. Now we can get onto details for detail in the roof and stuff later, but my key point at the moment here is focusing on the actual general shape of the build, as this is going to be what really adds detail more than anything. Now, as you can see, this is really starting to add a nice shape to the build. You know, and it doesn't look too much the same. We have got the same shape roof flow. So we want to make a little bit of a variation. So let's head over to the opposite side over here. And at this point, we're going to bring some pillars up to around about the halfway point. Let's raise those and connect it all up. And for this side, we're going to go for a slab roof. So we're going to bring some slabs out, bring it all the way across, and then just step your slabs up one at a time and connect to the side. Now, you see how this connects from the side here. This gives us a different varied roof height, a different style of roof. And also something that you want to consider here is that adding in a sort of roof of this shape rather than opposed to the slanted style for the stairs here, it creates more of an overhang. So you could go ahead and make a little section underneath here if you wanted. You could leave this open so that it feels a bit more like a shelter. So you'd have something kind of like this. Obviously, the roof would be filled in and you could go ahead and just fill these gaps in as well. But that would create a little bit more of a section here. You also want to take into account here that the area that I've put on the side here, I've kept within side the pillars. And what this does, it allows us to make an overhanging edge for the build here without it sort of stepping past. Had the pillar been sitting here, the roof would have come out to here, which would have been coming out to here and you would kind of be stuck with where to go. Do you continue it up here? It just, it's just not going to work. So if you're creating an extra section or anything like that on the build, you want to make sure that you're thinking about if the roof is going to overhang, will it have somewhere to sort of fall into? Because we always want to make sure that we fall into the building without overhanging it again to create some kind of weird shape. Another thing you can consider is adding a different color to the area on the sides here, because this will make it look a little bit more like an extension to the build rather than opposed to it feeling like part of the build. As you can see, that different color there just adds a bit of a break and makes it feel like it's a separate part of the build, something that's been added later on, which I think looks pretty cool. Now, we're going to head around to the back of the build here. And again, it's the same thing. You want to create something different. And one thing that I like to do with the back of builds, usually sometimes on the front, depending on the build itself, is to add a large area that comes all the way up. Let's bring this all the way up to the top of the build. We can connect it into the side here. Now, this could be another little roof point here, but we still have this area here where I said we're going to have a chimney with this little red area. But I think what is good is having like a balcony kind of stretch across. 
So having a platform around this height here, and we can have a little doorway in here somewhere, add some upside down stairs around the edge here, and then go ahead and then just continue this as if it was a sort of other section to your build. As you can see, adding in that balcony creates another detail on a different level and something a bit different as well. So it's not a roof or anything like that, but it adds a variation which really adds a good detail to the build. Now, one of the most biggest problems I think that people have when they're building things is coming up with a variation. And the thing is, a lot of people don't realize it, but you don't necessarily need a variation in the layout. You can use a layout multiple times and create several different types of houses of it. So for instance, here you can see we've got this layout here. We've got the roof height up here. We've got a little level down here. This one is down here. So we could change this up completely. This section here could be brought down. We could turn this at the back here into maybe like a little shed. We could go ahead. We could bring this level down to here, change it out to slabs. We could change this section here at the front, make it actually be part of the building and protrude it all the way out to the very top of the build. There's many variations you can do. So the key thing is thinking about different heights and different levels and just trying to make each side have something different from the last. Don't give it the same style of detail. Don't make it symmetrical. Just add different bits of detail here and there. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a few ways that a build can change all built on the same platform itself. So we're gonna be using this exact layout and I'm gonna show you how the build can vary from making small changes that make a big change in terms of look to the build. Okay, all these designs are gonna be based off the same layout. So as you can see here, we've got exactly the same layout, but the build looks very different and probably because we've got some details in here. So first of all, the front porch area, I've changed the sort of style of it out. We've added in the birch, so it's the same as the color of the top of the building. And we've created a slab roof rather than the stair pointing roof at the center, which I think looks really cool. Now, we have got a little outline for the roof here to add a bit of detail. But as you can see, we've used the standard stairs for the top of the build with a little bit of texture. And this side over here, rather than the slabs, we've gone ahead and added another similar roof. We've also added a bit of a Tudor sort of effect to the top of the wall here, just to add a bit of detail. And to really give a little bit of depth here, I've gone ahead and added these little stumps at the bottom, just sticking out. Now these are just little basic stumps, but they really add a good bit of detail. You could also make some extra detail if you wanted by making your pillars here protrude. You could have them sticking out and have the main walls sunken back a little bit. It's entirely up to you on the style you're going for, but you can do many things like that just to create a bit more depth. But personally, I do like the flat walls like this. They feel a little bit more realistic with sort of buildings you would see today. Now, with that being said, over on the right hand side here, I've completely changed this side of the building up. You can see we've got these little sort of pillars here for a sort of a secondary porch area, which you could maybe use as a work area, depending on what you want to do with this house. And then again, coming around to the back here, we've kept that tall peak as we did in the previous one. But instead of having a balcony, we've added a little overhang here. And then we've gone ahead and detailed a nice chimney into the edge of the build. And overall, I think this creates a really nice looking little house. But like I said, it's only done with a minimal change to the details from the previous version. So with that being said, let's see what else we can do. Again here, we've got a very similar style. Now I've gone ahead and I've kept very similar with the roofs because I want to show you that even though you've got the same roof style, you can still make quite a big change to the way the building looks. As you can see the front here, we've got a very tall peak now, which goes all the way up to the top of the roof. We've got this little sheltered area here with some campfires that have been extinguished to create a nice little entrance way to the building. At the side here, we've got a little balcony and we've also got a secondary balcony just here with an overhanging roof, which I think really does add a nice detail to this building. We've got a little planting area down the bottom here. And then over this side here, we've added a little roof area, but instead of having it going up and having the sort of stairs on it, we've gone ahead and done it with the slabs. So it's not a huge difference. We've also brought the roof down a little bit so that we can add some windows up the top here for a little bit of detail. We've also added a little bit of detail with some trapdoors here on what be like the connecting points of the pillars. 
which I think works really well. Now at the back here, I've gone ahead and extended the size of the chimney to make it look a little bit bigger, a little bit wider at the top, which I really think adds a nice sort of thick, strong detail to the build. It really kind of makes it feel strong and supported. The area that went all the way up to the roof here has been turned into a little shed in the back of the build, which we now have as a garden. We've got a little doorway under the back here, which creates a little walkway into this little area. And I think it just works great overall. Moving on to another design again with the very same theme. So we're keeping with the same blocks and the same palette, the same style roofs and stuff like that, just so that you can see that you can get a very different feel. At the front here, we've gone with the same sort of porch way that we had on the first design that we done when we were showing how to create the different levels. But as you can see, we've added a different section over here, again, changing it to the spruce wood. This really creates a nice additional section to the build and makes it feel like it's been added later on. It's not part of the original build. We've got the same roofs. So as you can see, we've got the sloping roofs. We've got the sloping roof again here with the stairs. Again, stairs over here. So over on this side, I've varied it and turned it into a little area, maybe to put some sheep or some horses or something like that as a little overhanging area. You could also get rid of all this and just use it as a sort of storage shelter to cover up maybe some boxes or crates and stuff like that. Other than that, the front of the build is very similar, but we have created a new roof peak here. Now we haven't extended the build out at all. All we've literally done is added in an additional triangle section to a point of the roof here. And we've brought the roof up to that single point and connected it up and then added in a pillar here just to make it look like it's a separate section of the build. But it really does create a very different look to it. Other than that, if we come around the side here, you can see we've created these little overhangs on the windows. Now this is simply a slab with a trap door and then a fence underneath. And it just creates a nice little shelter for the front of the windows, which I think works really well. At the back here, we've done something completely different. We've gone ahead and added in that sort of section from the bottom that did go all the way to the top originally, but we've kind of cut the top section off and created a huge balcony all the way across the back of the build. A little bit of detailing with a table and chairs and then some little bushes. We've still got that same sort of chimney there and then a little support underneath so it looks like the balcony is actually being supported underneath. But yeah, this creates again, yet again, a very different looking building. And yet out of these three buildings, we've not really changed anything style wise. We're still using the same roof designs. We're still using the same block palette. We're not really going any different, but each one is very different in looks from the last. Okay, let's slightly mix it up this time. So this time we've gone ahead and we've completely changed the roof to a very tall looking roof. This is a typical kind of medieval fantasy style roof. So for these roof designs, we're using a very similar thing. So we're just using a stair, upside down stair, and then a full block on top. And then we repeat stair, upside down stair, full block. And that is basically how we create these nice peaks for these tall roofs. Now this build here, is actually exactly the same as the last build. The only difference here is that I've made the roofs taller. So everything else is the same, but you can see just by adding in those taller roofs, just how different the build actually looks. You know, it creates a whole new look to the build and it really does feel very different just because it feels very taller. It feels much bigger and I guess a little bit more grand. Now, again, I've kept that exact same style here. So nothing has been changed except for the roofs again. So as you can see, this time we've used a lot of the slab roofs to really create a lower peak to all of the roofs. And again, look how different this looks. This creates a very different feel to the build completely. We've got this slab roof that is exactly the same. So we're just going up by slabs all the way to a center point and then down again. On the top here, we've created a little bit of an archway. So we've got a single slab, then we've got two, and then we've gone up by half a block. We go two across to make it a full block, two across going up again, just to create that nice curve. And we've extended that same pattern all the way up. On the sides here, it's just stepping the slabs up all the way to a point in the center. But 
on the front and back of the build, it creates this nice arched way to the roof. And I think it really works really well. Now, I'm not particularly sure that this style works with the layout, but we have gone for this Viking slash Nordic style roof. Now, this is a typical style you see where we create this cross on the top sections of the peaks of the roof. We do that by using a stair, upside down stair, and then a stair facing out on top on each side. And as you can see, it creates these nice kind of crosses. Now, like I said, it's not necessarily the best design for this layout of building, but I just wanted to show off how it would look if you just switch up just the roof style and nothing else. We've also switched it out for the spruce planks and we've created the stair pattern with a stair upside down stair and created that all the way across the edge of, a tr of the trim. This creates a really nice pattern and makes it feel a little bit different, which I think looks really nice. Now, this is exactly why I say that your color choices can make or break a build because look at the difference this makes. And yet this is exactly the same building. The color choices here are very different. As you can see, we have got the dark prismarine for the roof. We've got the white tones for the wall here, which is white wall, calcite and white concrete powder, which creates a really nice weathered look. The fences on the top corners here have been changed for the andesite walls and the pillars have been changed for the acacia logs. And overall, I've got to say this creates a really nice vibe and a really nice color choice. It's very different, but I think it stands out very nicely. The bricks at the back here really blend really nice with the white and with the green roof. And I've got to say, I really love the way it looks. Now, this is why I always say to you that color choices are a major part in what you build. So it's really important to make sure you've got the color choices that you want. This can also work very different from biome to biome, but you want to make sure that the colors are blending colors. So one of the things that I always do is make a stack of colors of different blocks and just see how they look in a stack of a pile together. Usually it's quite clear which, which blocks work well together and which ones don't. So go ahead and sort of play it by eye, but don't be afraid of mixing up the block choices just to see how it looks, because as you can see in this example, I think this makes a huge difference. Now, here's another clear example of how a small change can make such a big impact. So simply by raising the build up in the air and creating two little platforms, we've got a completely different looking building here. It feels much larger, even though it's exactly the same build. We've added a nice little garden over to the side here with a little entranceway that comes straight out into it, which I think works really well. And then over to the side here, we've created a little kind of walkway and entrance into what is the little stable area or storage area. The back of the build is exactly the same. We haven't changed anything at the back, but this alone really makes the build feel so much more bigger and sort of uh, larger, if you like, than what it originally was. The design is exactly the same. There is no changes. It's literally just been moved up a block and then added in a couple of little sections and look at the change it makes. So if you've built something, don't be afraid to extend upon it, add to it, you know, or if you're building, consider building a block up in the air so that you have a bit of a platform that you want to build from, you know, adding in a little garden, a little sort of area where you want to do some farming or anything like that. It really will add such a major change to the style of the build. OK, here we've got another clear example of a small change making such a big impact. We have exactly the same layout as the last one. The only difference is we've gone ahead and added a tower. As you can see, this tower over the side here, it blends in with the same color palette. We've gone ahead and we've got like a bit of a stumpy roof. It's not too sort of tall and pointy, but it blends in nicely with the height of the building. We've also gone ahead and joined it down here. So it does kind of run into the edge of the stable area, but I think it works either way. We've also added in some spruce leaves because the spruce leaves work great with the green texture from the dark prismarine. So it blends in at a nice sort of tone and really sort of complement each other. And finally, we have another small change here, and that is simply by adding in another area inside the roof. The roof doesn't have to finish where we finish it. We can always extend it up by creating a new area at the very top of the build. As you can see, we've just got a simple boxed in area that is a little bit thinner than our main roof. 
We've gone ahead, used the same roof on it using stairs. And again, it's, it's pretty much just repeating the pattern, but it's added so much detail. So as you can see, step by step, as we're adding in and changing in different things, we can see just how much a build can change. So starting with the layout, we created a basic sort of design for the builds. So we've got our basic build and we've added in a few areas that we plan to build. When adding those designs, we can create multiple different versions of houses, going from something as simple as this, as you can see with many varying different roofs, and each design can be changed. Even though you have that exactly the same layout, you can make several designs that all feel very different. It doesn't matter if you're using the same block palette or not, the builds can still look very different. As you can see, each one of these really has its own look and feel, even though they are very similar in the theme, style and colors. One of the first no noticeable changes is when you change in roof heights and start creating very different roofs. The taller the roofs are, the more grand the builds feel and the larger they feel in general. The smaller the roofs are, the more they feel like small cottages and a little bit more of a cozy build rather than opposed to a large sort of mansion or a rather a built up build. Lower roofs really create that little coziness and really add a nice little country vibe to what you're actually building. Added in something like a Nordic style is a very nice style, but I don't think it works the best with this particular building. The roofs look lovely with a nice edge and a nice trim, so it creates a very different vibe to the build and the changing of the edge to a spruce wood makes the roofs stand out a lot more. One of the biggest changes you can do is changing colors. This is one of the most noticeable changes that we've done in the video. And I got to say that these colors definitely work very nice with the build. We still have the exactly the same design, but the colors alone make it feel like a completely different build. Adding in a platform or an area on the side of the build can really create a huge difference. The size comparison in this build and this build feel very different, yet it's exactly the same, same size. The only difference is it has been raised up by one block and then we've had two little sections added. We can also make a huge difference by adding in a tower. I think towers work great across the town now and again because they create a different sort of point of view. Usually the houses with towers get noticed across the town, so they kind of stand out and create a new sort of style to the build. Finally, don't be afraid to extend your builds. You can always build up if you have a large enough roof. Don't be afraid to go ahead and create a new section in your roof. This can be created by adding in a smaller area with inside the roof, just extending it up so that it peeks through it and creates this creates a new additional height. And overall, as you can see, this works perfectly. While a build layout is very important for building any type of building, I want to stress that it doesn't matter if you reuse the same layout for several buildings within a town or city. It's more so the shape and the height variance of different roofs and different levels on a build that are gonna really make the huge difference to how a building looks. As you've seen in this video, we've created many different buildings here, all based on the same layout. Yet, every single one of them feels very different from the last. Whether it's adding in a small section of different details, changing the roof levels, or changing the roof heights. In general, these are what really make or break a build and allow you to create your own designs. So, don't be afraid to use that same layout. If you've got one layout that's worked really well for one building, don't think that you have to create a brand new layout for another building. You can use that same layout, but just create a new design for the build in general. Go ahead and switch up the colors, change up the roof heights, move the roof angles around, change the areas that stick out of the building to different heights, shift them around, make alterations and change it up the way you like. But as always, guys, I hope this video has been helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.